Hey George, good morning, how are you? Couldn't be a better morning for a November in the Midwest. Just don't even need a jacket. Beautiful. Daisy and the dash already. Wind is open. Looking forward to this day. I hope this mall has a normal day today. Feel bad for those people. Waitresses got screwed out of their hole on best day of the year tips. Yes, it turns out, I watched it on the news last night, there was no shooting. There was a scuffle, a gun fell out, and that's when all hell broke loose. No shots fired, nobody, nobody uh, injured. I went and put that on a comment right away as soon as I got done watching the news. You know, I, I was there, you know, at the beginning of it, right? And uh, I just happened to, you know, be there. And there were these emergency vehicles trying to get in. And there was a fire truck. And these people were taking photos and not moving. Why the fire truck had its siren on and lights. And this firefighter got out and chewed their ass out like you wouldn't believe. Really got in their ass. It was so fun to watch. And told him it was an emergency, what were they were doing. Then they tried to just move over a little bit, and he said, don't even try it. Get out of here. Get the hell out of the way. Anyway, I got it all on uh, video. But there's no way in hell I would upload that, because they'll turn it around and make it look like this fireman's crazy and that he needs to learn better manners. When he was really telling this dumbass to get out of the way that deserved every bit of it. Oh yeah, the fire in the hallway, yeah. That was lucky too, I guess. On the fire on the highway, I pulled over, you know, and uh, like I couldn't have pulled over later. If you notice, there's a guardrail. I was at the beginning of it, so there wouldn't have been enough for me to be on the side of the road. And once I looked through my camera and could see that nobody was in there, I thought it was a horse trailer at the beginning. I just sat there and videoed away. I mean, not that anybody doesn't know it already, but it shows you how hot car fires burn. Here's a guy in shorts. I bet he's looking for bottles right here. No, maybe not. People in shorts today. Hey, Pam. Pam, it's like summertime here. Heavy frost this morning, day season, windows down, sun shining. Is it like this in Canada? Oh, really? I mean, I'm enjoying the hell out of it, but it's not normal. Grass is green. Grass is green everywhere. It's like summertime, not even like brown. Hey, buy a Powerball today, you guys. I don't care what state you live in. Buy a Powerball and check the uh, Mega Millions too. That was last night. I don't know if anybody hit that or not. They're both over 200 million. Well, that's good, Pam. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I mean, 
Yeah, I would say it does. Not not the interview so much. I'm telling you, man. One, one thing you learn is, you know, and I'm driving around like I do. I, as I said, I've been this way my whole life. But yeah, I think you get a you get to figure things out because you see it all the time, and there's no agenda, and it's just your own empirical observation. You know, you're seeing this here, and you're seeing this there, and it gives you a good understanding of what it's really like out there. Uh, the scary part to me is that the, the, the economy is dwindling and the middle class is disappearing. And that you got a lot of good, hard-working people that, that put an ad in the paper for a $10 an hour job and a thousand people show up. Now, the scratch ones are really bad odds, and a lot of times the jackpots are gone before you buy the scratch-off, which to me is fraud. They cover their ass on it by saying that you're supposed to look at an ancient, outdated uh, piece of paper in the gas station you bought it from, but I, I don't go along with that. Hey, this guy's out looking for bottles right there. Oh, thank you, Night Flight. Oh, bingo ones. Yeah, but a Powerball, I mean, the, these these are pretty good pots. I mean, somebody's got to win, right? It's a game of chance. It's not considered gambling. Just for three bucks, get the multiplier, too. Three dollars it'll cost you. It's worth three bucks just to have that extra endorphins release that there's a possibility that may be me that wins. Oh, that's true, Black. It can happen to everybody. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm telling you, if I won the Powerball or the Mega Millions, it wouldn't change my life one bit. And I'm so happy to feel that way. I wouldn't get a new house. I wouldn't get any new clothes. I wouldn't get a new car. I wouldn't get a new camera. Nothing. Everything is just fine the way it is. And it's hard to get there. Like today, I plan on eating at P.F. Chang's. And I'm going to ask my waiter or waitress, I'm going to ask him if they were working last night. And they're going to, if they say yeah, well, if they say no, well, not much I can do about that. If they say yeah, and I'll say, well, how much do you usually make on a uh, shift on a busy night? That, that should have been their busiest night of the week. If they tell me, I'm going to pay them that what their tip should have been yesterday. It's not a big deal, but it's just one nice thing I can do because I don't have expensive tastes. Other than my camera equipment, and not my video, but my still. That's crazy, Steve, isn't it? It's just like, you know, poker, world championship of, of uh, poker playing. Uh, I mean, there's skill and there's luck because you still have to get the cards. But when I see somebody win the world championship of poker twice, that's a whole nother animal. It almost doesn't seem possible. Now, Steve, how much would those jackpots be on that? Looks like people are already going into Barnes & Noble. Maybe not. Can't tell if they're going in or the door is locked. I think the door is locked. I would have thought Barnes and Noble was open early, but maybe that was just a Black Friday thing. 
here I was the day before Black Friday, you know, Thanksgiving Day watching uh, all those people over at Barnes & Noble getting set up to have a busy day and here that bullshit happens. Wow, Steve. That's a pretty lucky guy. Open oh, 10. I thought that over these holiday weekends, though, they were open earlier. Oh, thank you. These, these barns are noble here. I went to the one down the street, too, about three miles, Stevens Point or something. And uh, they're they're real small Barnes and Nobles. You can always tell by right off the bat on uh, their normal stock whether it's soft or hardcover. Oh, that used to be a Sears. And, and I'm glad you said that because, like, when you look off to my right here, like to the right of Barnes and Noble. To me, it looks like those were businesses that are long gone, and you said Sears used to be there, so that answers that question. But I see that there's construction trailers out there, so what are they doing there? Are they going to tear that down? Are there new stores going in? Is that an addition to new stores or old stores other than the Sears? Oh, that's cool, Steve. Man, I can remember when I was a kid, I used to go to the, it was the biggest Sears in the world, Lincoln Park, Michigan. And that's where everybody went for everything. I don't care if you needed a lawnmower or school clothes for the fall. And that's torn down now, a lot of the structure around there. And uh, it was the biggest parking lot you've ever seen in your life. And sometimes you couldn't even find a place to park. You could go in there and get a hot dog. You had to stand up at a little counter. And here they are out of business. I dropped out of college one year and worked for Hearts Mountain, the pet company. And I had to deliver a whole truckload of liquor to the buyers at Kmart. The people that, you know, picked the vendors. And they were such they were such arrogant assholes. You would have to wait in line. I had to wait in line two and a half hours around the holidays to give them gifts. That's how popular and successful it was. And now they're out of business. And that whole complex is vacant. It's just interesting in commerce how you can go from being on, on the top of the pile to nothing and out of business in no time. That's how it was for me, Steve, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're a server now, I mean, the reality it is, I'm sure there's still some people making out, but, like, I was, I ate at that uh, crab thing last night, which was, okay, those were, I would say, the best oysters I've ever had. I'm not kidding you. Uh, that sounds like a punchline and a joke. The best oysters I ever had were in Fort Wayne around Thanksgiving. But it's true. Beautiful presentation. Five different kinds of sauce to put on it. All on a bed of ice. Plenty of crackers worth every damn dime. Was I think they were nineteen dollars for a dozen. I'll get a dozen oysters wherever I can. I don't care how much they are. So they're hard to find. Now on the other hand, honest again, I would say even considering out west, out east, nice seafood places, those are the best oysters I've ever had. Big, giant, prepared nice. I didn't have to struggle with any of them. Good as hell and huge. Huge oysters. But the soft shell crab, I don't think you could ruin a soft shell crab in a better way. Those were the worst soft shell crabs I've ever had in my life. What it struck me is soft shell crabs that fell off a truck that somebody found a week later and then refroze them. And then they put the thickest, crappy, cheap breading on them in the world. Those were absolutely terrible. So I got the best oysters and the worst soft shell crabs at the same place at the same time.
Oh, did it, Nicole? Okay. Oh, you're allergic to them. That's that protein in there, probably, Emily. Yeah, I just, I haven't been to Detroit in a month, month and a half. It got, it's really slow down there. I mean, I spent the whole month of August there and uh, the whole month of October. And it's just nothing like the old days. I've got two big boxes of clothes right now in the back of the van that I was unable to hand out. I even have cash that I was unable to hand out, if you can believe that. Uh, I think it's a combination of things. I think it's uh, more police presence. Uh, the middle class disappearing, and I can't I can't chalk it off to anything else other than COVID. But the areas that I frequent are dying. Yeah, iodine too. Yeah, soft shell crabs, at least in my opinion, I've certainly eaten enough of them. They're supposed to be thinly breaded. I mean, when I got those, I knew I was screwed. I knew they were just going to be two big, giant, frozen, crappy crabs. I, I'm, I made a big mistake last night. Overall, I'm glad I did it because uh, the oysters. But I should have got a damn pot belly sub and called it a day. I didn't even really feel like eating at the time. I mean, I was a little hungry, not a lot. I don't know if anybody else does this, but there's nothing worse than being starving at 10 o'clock and nothing's open. Oh, thank you, Matt. Come down here to the Starbucks. I'll buy you a coffee. I told these Starbucks people, not that it's any of my business, but, you know, I'm on the road all the time, right? I go to these coffee shops, restaurants, whatever. You know, even the biggest moron in the world would figure things out after a while. And at this particular Starbucks, they must be, they're not getting the tips they deserve. The other ones, they set you up much better. And the way that it's set up here, when you get to pay, it's easier to just pay and get the hell out of there than it is to fool with a tip. It's just one thing that you don't feel like dicking with. The other ones, it's really easy. You can put it on your credit card even, whatever. It asks you if you use your debit card. It's simple. It's just as easy to leave a tip as it is to do the original transaction. So I told him today, it's not my business, but you guys are, you know, I'm at these all the time and... I think you're losing your ass on tips. He said, you know, it's funny you should say that because I get a lot less tips at this one than the other Barnes and Noble or the other uh, Starbucks that I worked at. And I said, well, here's why. Hey, Catherine. Hey, okay now. How you doing? Oh yeah, so this is good. I'm going to take Daisy for a nice long walk today. She's basking in the sunshine. You basking in the sunshine, hon? Now she was in a mood this morning. She really wanted to get petted a lot and I wanted to sit on my lap. That's okay, hon. Daisy, Daisy's a pleasure seeker. Hey, Boo Malibu. I think I'm going to end up staying here longer. Weather's nice. Uh, nothing to do at home. And they're offering these super deals. It doesn't take for much for me. Today, uh, Mon Tuesday, I think, will be my eighth week on the road. She's a good girl. Couldn't ask for a better dog than Daisy. Hey, cat. Hey, 
Here's a lot of dogs out there. Uh, UPS is out delivering their Christmas gifts. That'll make an old man out of you doing that job for 35 years. Talk to one of those drivers that have been a driver in the small trucks for their whole life. They got knee problems, hip problems, carpal tunnel, you name it. Right on, Steve. Yeah, Frankie, I'll tell you, those parks in downtown Fort Wayne are just gorgeous. I went down there and got a King Gero or Gero King or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, I tell you, Fort Wayne to me is beautiful. I've already talked about five people into coming down here for a weekend, spending a weekend. It's really nice. Downtown, whoever is the uh, civil engineering architect, I'm sure they're dead now. But the way they laid out that downtown uh, Fort Wayne is beautiful. Those parks, even a little nuance. I went to a super friendly uh, laundry yesterday. Uh, everything's great. I love this place. Uh, I'm from a town called Flat Rock, Michigan. Yeah, Downriver. That's where I, they refer to Downriver, anything Downriver, Detroit. If you look at those communities on a map, Ecorse, Rouge, Taylor, Trenton, Rockford, Gibraltar, that kind of thing. Downriver of Detroit. Yeah. Hey, Mary. I don't know how your weather is up there, but you can't beat this. This is just like crazy beautiful. Windows open. Don't even need a jacket. People running around in shorts. Daisies, sun basking. Oh, have you? That's cool. Yeah, down river, yep, yep, it is, yep. I think it was a good place to grow up. My parents moved from Connecticut. My dad got a job at the factory. A lot of people from the south. The good old days when people moved to get a job. Oh yeah, it's beautiful here. It is, Steve. Yeah, really nice. It's nice out there where you'd live too, Blue Mail. Well, I've been out there with some pretty good snowstorms. I like how you can get, you know, 18 inches of snow in May. Yeah, as you know this, uh, a lot of people, you know, you tend to think as Denver, you're going to go out there and drink uh, Coors beer right out of the stream and pet wild animals when Denver's got some of the worst air pollution in the country. Anything that sits down in a valley like that, Phoenix, Denver, uh, those kind of places. There's a few places like that in California. Oh, good for you. Mile high city. Hey, Ray, how you doing? Yeah, it's beautiful down here, too. I see on that sign a do-it-yourself pretzel kit. This mall must have been around a while. That sign looks like something out of the 50s. Not the digital part, but the top part. Yeah, no, I know. it. Yeah, you're right. How long you lived out there, Blue Malibu? Oh wow, 30 years. I've been out there a lot. Boulder. What's that town on the other side of the Rocky Mountains? Grand something? 
Granby or something like that. Wow. Foot of snow. So you must be way up there in North Ontario, right? North of Toronto. Getting too hot for Daisy. Oh, Grand Lake, okay. Yeah, plans for today. I never have any plans. Well, I'm planning on getting some interviews. Yesterday I got, you know, I went to laundry and that took a while and then the damn mall thing. I didn't get anything done yesterday. I hope to today. Yeah, it's nice, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good parks around here. The problem is, I mean, my idea of a good park is one where I don't have to have Daisy on a leash and I don't need to worry about getting in trouble. So probably a nice, big, good field would be work for me today. There are some beautiful parks downtown. If you look at Fort Wayne, the way those parks uh, are connected to the downtown area is just gorgeous. It looks like that uh, high-end... Uh, Asian uh, mother nature landscaping theme like how the roads and the rails and the bridges morph into the river it's beautiful really gorgeous oh did you really Blue Melba are you talking about the one that uh, I saw last night Cindy I guess Tassie's getting some donations, which is nice. She's just in a little bit of a jam. I mean, uh, it's not a big worry, but it is in the back of my mind. I mean, Tassie tells you like it is. You don't need to worry about her lying to you about anything. She's brutally honest. So I'm sure it's tempting in times like this. You know, once you drop that veil of being a sex industry worker, it, it kind of seems to, to, to my opinion, it goes away for good. It's not like a young girl thinking about trying it for the first time. Once that's water behind you, it's easy to get back into because you detach yourself from it. It's not as uh, disgusting as repulsive it would be for someone that never experienced it before. And I don't want to see her head back there. It's easy to say, well, I'm going to do this temporarily and I'm in a jam now, you know, I'm working just to pay rent, so. Tassie, I would say, is just, to me, has got a carte blanche. She needs some help. She's going to get it. I'm not going to worry about it not being perfect. Just by virtue of where she's been, what she experienced, and how she even gave a shit to come this far. I'm right across from uh, Barnes & Noble, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh, her name's Carly? Charlie. Oh, are you talking about that blonde that was running around with the camera? She was right by that light pole right there. Oh, that's her name, Carly. How, how did you get to see her? Is, isn't she a, a, a Fort Wayne uh, TV personality? Charlie. Hey, Faye. Well, you know, they do use protection, but, you know, if you know, rubbers aren't considered safe sex. So, I mean, they, they start out with good intentions. Oh, okay. All right, well, she was certainly busting her ass yesterday. What is that, like a local Fort Wayne TV station, or is she some outfit that goes around and does subcontract work for other stations? Oh, that a girl. Way to go.
Carly. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you, Mary. See Daisy sleeping in the back seat now. Because the sun gets too warm for her. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Yeah, complain about him, too. I don't mind runners, but not not at a place where it's supposed to be where individuals can go out and relax. If I, if I was in love with cross-country, I'd go to meets, which I don't. When I'm sitting out in the, at a picnic table in a park designed for recreation... I'm not interested in seeing 80 people run by me with white powdered lines painted into the grass as far as I can see. Like I told him, what's next? Go-kart races? Hey, Karen. Oh, I'm having a great Saturday. Better believe I am. Well, I'll tell you, anybody out there thinking about opening a fast food restaurant, I recommend getting a Chick-fil-A. Everywhere I go, those are the longest lines. I'm going to have to get one of those. I had one a long time ago. I didn't think it was any big deal. But the cars are like, you know, it's crazy the lines these people wait in for a Chick-fil-A. Oh, hey, Warren, how you doing? Yeah, those parks aren't designed for that. They're not. It's not what they're supposed to be around. I, I didn't. I wasn't going to make a federal case out of it, but I, I'd like to look at the charter on that and their bylaws, because I don't think they have the autonomy to turn those into uh, athletic field, fields because they feel like it. Yeah, you hear a snoring back there. Oh, really? I don't think I think McDonald's fish sandwich is pretty good. I, I had one of those the other night. If I hit rock bottom, there's nothing around other than a subway. I'll get a McDonald's fish sandwich. That's about the only thing at McDonald's that's even remotely good. Oh really, Ashley? Oh okay. Huh. There's a brew house down the street. There's a million restaurants right on the strip right here. Nice liquor stores. Hey, Mary, don't forget to get a Powerball. Yeah, but if you own a if you if you own a uh, successful Chick Fil A. Uh, you got to be pulling out about 300 grand a year, three and a quarter, is the owner, and that's not 80-hour weeks either. You own a food truck, you're going to be working like a damn slave just to break even. Forget that. Hey Jay, how you doing? No, Powerball is tonight, isn't it? Is it Mega Millions tonight or Powerball? Just get one ticket with a multiplier. Hey Shannon, how you doing? Yeah, I wouldn't want to pull it around. I'd want to detach it and just let it run off the mountain pass in uh, Denver. 
I don't want any kind of job like that where I'm like, I never really totally get away from it. It sounds like a great idea and you hand out sprouts and everybody's getting healthier wherever you drive and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that would help, Mary. That would that would that would help. No, Ashley, just go in there and tell them you want a Powerball ticket or whichever one's tonight, Saturday, and you want the multiplier on it. It's another dollar, so it's three dollars total. Just say I'd like tonight's drawing. Just say the big one. They'll know what you mean. It's one or the other. Powerball, Mega Mains. I'd like the multiplier here, and they'll say three dollars, ma'am. I don't think we're going to be business par partners, Mary. I'd just as soon uh, high, sell high-fat hot dogs, cash only, where I slept in every morning, didn't have any employees. Everybody got heart disease, and I made $400,000 a year. You'd want to hand out sprouts and serve breakfast all day, which is hard to do on a grill, and give people hugs, and... Uh, pine cones for Christmas presents we would have different philosophies yeah it sounds good Dan yeah yeah I'll be around yep oh the double dragon oh okay oh Ted is Ted, is, is Ted doing that hot dog thing or not You'd want veggie hot dogs and uh, meatless this, meatless that. I'd want to just have a chicken trying to get out of the kitchen with one leg and one wing, screaming to save its life. It'd be an entirely different uh, business model. You could, you could pitch the healthy slogan, I could pitch the taste good slogan. Thank you. Yeah, that's it, Jay. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, he's a good guy, Ted. I talked to him on the phone a couple times. I used to, I didn't really know him well. I took him and his kid flying one time and then kept in touch with him. And he worked, he sold hot dogs and drew caricatures on Mallory Pier down in, uh, uh, Key West made a fortune. Yeah. Uh, she'll be able to get one together. You know, there's deals. I mean, you can get it. She, she's just in this. You know, when you're making that kind of money working at fast food, you really can't afford to stay at a Super 8 every night of the week and. She had to get out of her mother's, which is really her sister, for a variety of reasons. And uh, it's just in a little bit of a jam right now with cash flow. I don't mind with Tassie. I want something that's really easy, high profit, short hours. A lot of days off, no advertising, no big licensure bullshit. I don't need a $5,000 premium for liability in case somebody slips on a hot dog bun that got wet on the ground. I want problem free. When somebody shows up with a PETA sign, I want to be able to club them with a plastic bat right between their eyes like Fred Flintstone would. Yeah, you're right, Mary. That's true. Oh, thank you, A. Smith. Appreciate that. I like that song, Sylvia's Mother. I about got in a fight over that one time in a bar in Ann Arbor. They were pissed that I played that song in the jukebox. Bunch of old dyed hair, tie-dyed hippies. Uh, I don't know if it's really a, a decision I like. thought I want to help these girls. You know, I was just down there. I'd run into them. I think what got me... Uh, 
you know, the difference between just observing them and introducing myself and later on interviewing was how kind they were to stray cats and birds. It's just something about a working girl that uh, doesn't have proper clothing on in January, taking the time to buy a dozen hot dog buns to throw out to birds in the alley or to get some a hot dog or some uh, beef jerky to give to stray cats that are starving. I think that's what was the difference between talking to them and not. That's a good song, Karen. No, oh, is that right, Warren? Oh, Ann Arbor's cool. Oh, a CNA? I don't think there's any money in CNA. Yeah. 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 Yep. There is a way I can help you out. What do you want? Just a couple of the sausage and muffins and a hash brown and a large coffee. Yeah, you know, I saw you yesterday walking downtown. Really? Yeah. I almost pulled over and talked to you then. Really? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Hang on. I saw you twice, actually. Really? Yeah. Well, you get around. I got a ride on the bus last night out this way. Oh, okay. Got good weather today. Yeah, it's nice. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It, Thank you. So here's 10 bucks. Thank you, sir. You have a good day. You too. God bless you. Yep. There's a guy. I saw him twice yesterday downtown. Yeah, Blue Melba, you know how, like, sometimes somebody just needs, uh, needs some lunch money. I don't want to, like, turn everything into, like, a double barrel shotgun. By the way, I don't mind buying you lunch, but you got to answer all these questions. He got a free pass from my onslaught of questions that are none of my business. Yeah, there's lots of people that do this. This isn't any big deal. And like I said before, now I'm getting I'm getting more and more uh, ad revenue on uh, YouTube, so it's really not my money. I mean, I didn't earn it. It just like was given to me for something that I was doing anyway, driving around, taking photos and uh, pictures, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it isn't like it seems. I mean, yeah, I could be, you know, buying uh, dirty magazines and going to massage parlors and spending my money on that, but the money I get, uh, I'm, uh, it does pay my expenses now. It never used to. That That's relatively recent. Of course, it doesn't pay for my camera equipment. That's okay, because I was buying it anyway. Of course, my time's not paid for, but I don't care because I'd be doing this anyway as well. So, I get this money now, and it's just like free money. It'd be like getting paid for going on vacation. So, when I talk about going over to P.F. Chang's and giving some waitress that got stiffed out of the best day of the year because of some asshole, $150 because of the tip she missed, or I hand out money like this all day long at 10 and 20 bucks a pops to homeless people, it's not that big a deal. It's not like I'm taking my hard-earned hard money and taking it out of uh, an account because of some job I hated, and that's how I got it. It's like free money, and it's fun to just give it away. It's fun to just give it away, like, uh, and that's exactly what I do. I don't record what I do, just what other people do. But, like, it's it's so fun to just, like, give $20 tips on things and $10 tips for coffee. and I don't give a shit because 
they're having a hard time. But see, I don't think that's the equation for like some good person. I can see why you think that, but it's not my money. It's like money YouTube gave me. You know what I mean? That's why people want to like donate money. I don't need it. I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm not bragging, but don't send me money. It'd be like criminal to like act like I needed like reimbursement. Yeah, and you guys think like, you know, it's expensive. It's really not. I mean, I eat out most of the time anyway. And uh, that's, you know, it's fun eating out in nice restaurants. But, uh, you know, they've got this deal going on now, you know, because everybody's going broke. Where I get this, I'm getting this deal at these Red Roof Inns for like $42 a night. It's like, that's crazy. You know, here I am getting $42 a night and Tassie's paying $64 a night. That's how the world works, though. When you're somebody struggling and you need a free dinner or a free lunch, you pay full tilt. No ticky, no washy. You go into a place and say, hey, thank you, I'm hungry, could, could you buy me a lunch? They say, no, you're going to have to have a debit card or cash. When you're LeBron James or Michael Jordan, you don't pay for your dinner anywhere. Everybody's buying it for you. It's nuts. Once in a blue moon, what will happen to me is people will figure out that I've got a YouTube channel because they see me in it. Like Amy at Lionhead Bookstore in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Interviewed a couple guys out there. She came out. It's like, you know, what, what, you're, what are you interviewing people for? And it's like, uh, eh, just, you know, find out what's going on in different places. And she said, oh. So I went in, did a little video of her store. And I went to check out. And she wanted to give me uh, a T-shirt, which was like 20-something bucks. And I said, you know what? I, I don't want to sound like a jerk, and I appreciate it, but I want to pay for this T-shirt because uh, uh, I can afford it for one and two somebody's going to come in here someday that wants a t-shirt that can't afford it when you're broke $20 for a t-shirt is like absurd I said give it to them and she said I'll do that and I know she will she's that kind of person so I mean this is all like I'm the lucky guy to, to be able to do this I don't have like kids going to college or bills I don't have any bills so I just do this fun yeah the money in uh, oh, that's cool Warren the money is in views it, everybody you know everybody wins the pissing contest by subscribers but it really doesn't matter it's the views in it like I just got upgraded on some kind of new uh, way my videos show up and I was barely hanging in there for years and I got a lot of yellow dollar signs which means the money goes out the window you don't see that on your end but they've really gotten a lot better about that back in the day if I talked about sex or drugs it was over you they didn't want my video coming up in the middle of a Bible uh, college advertisement which I don't blame them it's their deal you know you sign on the terms of agreement and then I think as time went on, I'm just guessing, I don't have anything to base this on, that they realized that people found the street life of people with drug issues and working girls interesting, and it wasn't necessarily negative like they thought it would be. And it's gotten much better. But what you're looking for is views. And depending on how your, your uh, uh, video is categorized. I can give you a good rule of thumb uh, on views you can you, you that's why like 99 percent of my videos don't make a dime you can count on about three dollars and six cents per thousand views that's if you haven't been dinged with unsuitable c content like i'll give you an example so last night you know i put shooting at mall now i'm not running around trying to make up bullshit but there was a shooting at a mall and that's what I titled the video I'm not gonna if I get dinged I get dinged but what am I gonna put on there happy birthday bozo clown party and then you click on it and you realize there's a shooting at a mall I'm just not gonna do it and I think YouTube you know you grade your own videos now as you upload them they know that you know there's no bullshit going on but sure enough as soon as that live was 
available. I saw the big yellow dollar sign. And you have to appeal it. You have to request for a manual review. Now, they don't get too many from me. So I requested the manual view, and sure as shit, later on came back, and I got full tilt for uh, ad revenue, which will be like $3.10 per thousand. I don't know how many views I got. But as it turns out, it's like, what, 9 bucks, 12 bucks, something like that. So that, that's how it works. Oh, well, thank you, Mary. Goodbye, Warren. Yeah, I could help you set up a channel. It's so easy to set up a channel. It's ridiculous. There's nothing to it. Uh, you, uh... I mean, anybody asking me advice, don't ask me how to get a bunch of subscribers because it's all luck and it would be fraudulent for me to give you advice uh, it was all luck but this is my these are my uh, recommendations from looking back think of a simple name chosen one was just something thrown out there i never thought people would watch i didn't plan on a channel blah 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 if i had it to do all over again i would have changed the name it was a joke when you spell it that way it has nothing to do with religion but i'm constantly <laughs> always telling people all the time uh, how to spell it even though I'll, I'll, they'll say how do you spell it and I'll tell them how to spell it and I'll watch them write down O-N-E so it's just a bad name and it's two words instead of one it's just constant explanation so I think of a simple name that even the world's biggest idiot knows how to spell for one keep it short and get an email to match your channel, it's easy too. Keep it simple. Think of what you want your channel to be and just be straight about it. And then, because you're uploading on the internet, you don't need a quality camera. You don't need 46 megapixel. They all get dummied down and reduced and compressed anyway. So cell phone pictures are fine. Then get your channel design, a good email, a nice channel name. You know, you got to get a Google name. Keep your real name out of it. Because you're, there's a bunch of weirdos out there that'll be making up bullshit, calling the cops on you. I wouldn't say what city I lived in. They'll be calling your neighbors and telling them you're making meth, and even though it's brownies for your kids and that kind of shit. So, you know, don't allow these stalkers an easy way to harass you. Simple name mission statement on what you're trying to do nice photos and you're off to the races and like i do anyway i would even though let's say you wanna uh you like painted turtles and you want a channel on painted turtles well that's great and that's neat and but as terry joe will tell you there's no shortage of animal videos on youtube so if you're thinking you're going to have this big giant successful channel someday because you like turtles you're dreaming I'm not saying it's not a possibility, but my suggestion to people is video anything and everything because even after all this experience, I couldn't tell you what people are going to like and what they're not going to like. Here's an example. The trailer park. When I drove through the trailer park, I thought, wow, this is really cool, these old looking trailers. Look at the views it got. There's lots of things that get crazy views that I almost didn't upload. So, if you think you know what the best content is, you're wrong. It's crazy what people find interesting. I mean, I'll take the time, like Shaker Village as an example, to spend three and a half hours photographing every single building there is. I'll put all the photos together, put movies to it, I mean put music to it, upload it, which takes forever, and then I'll... A, a photo of my a short video of my fried fish dinner does 10 times the views that's just the way it is on YouTube this stuff that I've been doing this whole trip it's not successful YouTube material interesting a little but it's not what drives the channel these photos of these small towns I already know when I'm doing it but like I said it's a hobby having a good time I, I like going in and 
you know, showing people what little towns look like, so I keep on doing it. But it's not a, in any way a money maker. All right, Jay, have a good day. See you, Ray. Yeah, I think it would get views. I think it would. I think people would like to just like tune in to like a struggling single mother. One thing that I think would hurt you a little bit, and I could be wrong about this, is a a husband in the household and a boyfriend too. It just kind of like seems like scamming. I don't think you are, because I've gotten to know you a little bit, but that's not going to be some tearjerker story when there's a boyfriend, a husband, and it just seems a little suspicious. Actually, I've had people email me on that before. They wondered if you were like a total fraud. or So I'm just telling you how people perceive things. I mean, Tassie has a way of getting across to people Look, this is how it is. I'm in a jam. Can you help me? Where other people won't send any money because they think it's all a bunch of bullshit. If Becky needed money for rent, I doubt she'd get much, just based on the way people perceive her and the way she presents her story. When Tassie needs stuff, it's the, you know, brute honesty and this is the way it is and people don't have any qualms and have any uh, hesitation about helping her out. So it's all how you're perceived. Uh, I'll tell you another thing, Shannon. Uh, you were, I, I got a couple, you know, people email me a lot about, you know, they want to keep it nice and they want, they don't like to think that I'm getting conned and whatever. And I got some emails from people, they thought that you were hinting around about trying to get somebody to buy you a pizza. But you were talking on another channel someplace about getting your nails done. Well, not that there's anything wrong with getting your nails done, but it doesn't seem to bode well with someone that doesn't have any money that's soliciting help. You see what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not saying you're guilty of any of these. I'm just telling you what people have verbalized to me and how they've perceived you. You too, Karen. COVID is different than the other viruses in the world. First of all, what are your qualifications? And what uh, sources are you using to make these crazy statements? I'm going to tell you right now, we're, we're not getting any conversations here about COVID being a farce and it's made up and everybody's hitting the panic button for nothing. If you're going to make comments like that, uh, I think you should make them someplace else. Yeah, I just talked to a guy that had it the other day. I mean, Mary just had a cousin, 30-year-old female, die from it. I mean, it's not a joke. Where the birds are, I hear some starlings singing out here. And you know, you got people like Mary, Faye, they're nurses. I'm not going to have them on here listening to this crazy talk. They're out there. Um, Faye's retired, but Murray's still in the trenches dealing with COVID. I'm not going to have some jack-off come on here and start talking about COVID's just a bunch of bullshit and that they don't know what they're talking It's insulting, and you're not going to talk about that here. No way.
Hey, Peanut. Well, see, see, but you didn't see. That's the thing. Your mom took you to get your nails done for your birthday. But see, that's my whole point: is they didn't know that part of the equation. People just saw you as getting your nails done and couldn't figure out why you'd be soliciting for help. See, that's my that's my point. So people don't get the full picture. Well, like I said, she just had a 30-year-old female cousin die four days ago. COVID's real, and it's... Check the obituaries out. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, they do. It's just how, you know, if you're... Uh, you know, if you're a single guy and there's no girls around, they think you're gay. If, if Mary is canoeing down uh, the Osaba River with a girl with short hair, she must be a lesbian. I mean, people are nuts, man. It's just how it is. I mean, snap judgments. It's, it's not real. Why do you think advertising so big? Because they want you thinking this way. I mean, they, they'll show cologne, and all of a sudden you see some old pervert on a boat with like 15 hot girls hugging them, and you're thinking, God damn, I mean, is that a panty dropper cologne that Gary sells? It's like, who wouldn't want a bottle of that if that's what it's going to turn into? It's, it's human nature. It's, it's easy to figure out. But it's not always accurate, as Shannon just uh, pointed out. She didn't pay for her nails getting done. Her mother did. Yeah, it's funny, the guy I talked to the other day, he didn't lose his taste, you know? I can remember getting flu in my life and thinking, God damn, I hope this goes away. I can't imagine, like, some doctor telling me you got this and it's only going to get worse. It's like, oh my God, man. Well, here, now we got this stuff and you never really know. No, I don't want these crazies around talking about, you know, we're just a bunch of ignorant people and that we're misunderstanding COVID. I don't want any government conspiracy, population control bullshit, none of that. Having a YouTube channel, it's the difference than me working with somebody where I had to listen to this bullshit or a neighbor that I couldn't avoid that talked about it all the time. On YouTube, you have the luxury of getting rid of these people. It's worth everything. I mean, YouTube ought to come out and say, you know what, we're going to start charging $500 a month to have a delete button. It's like, sign me up. It's worth every damn dime. Otherwise, I'd have to listen to these assholes, and I couldn't do anything about it. It's true, Dan. Yeah, you think there's more than one version, but where are you getting your information from is my question. Yeah, I think the same thing, Mark, yep. Hey, Lisa, how you doing?
Yeah, I got a flu shot a couple years ago, and I was like sick for three days. I, I'm not getting one. I'm a gambler. Oh, wow. Sorry about that, Pep. Such a great day today. Flag was just like this yesterday, barely blowing in the wind. That one's blowing better. See, this is a good example. Don't test flags for how fast the wind's blowing because the Chick-fil-A flag is small and it's going like hell. And the bag on top of the mall is not doing that great because it's a big, heavy flag. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, Ashley, how you doing? Yeah, I sleep. I sleep okay. My sleep hasn't been great. It's been, like, okay, but not, like, good. You know, I don't... I wake up tired. Now, my back's been bothering the hell out of me again. It's not that big a deal. It's a spinal erector muscle is what it is. And I just, just, you know, happens. It's just a combination. Of, what gets me is standing still. Like in a Barnes & Noble, I wasn't even able to look around that great yesterday. It doesn't bother me like sitting like this, but it, it's affecting my sleep. Okay, Dan. I can't believe this weather, man. I put the windows all the way down. Yeah, that's a good day for that. Uh, maybe a little too cool for all the way down. Got a little ahead of myself there. There's all sorts of shit I should be doing. I should be getting a new set of tires right now. I should be getting a new cell phone because I can go in and look at them. Old Indiana is really uh, lax compared to these other states. This whole damn state will probably be dead. <laughs> at least I went out eating out. I may not be around much longer, but I got to eat out right until the bitter end. Yeah, good luck, Pip. Oh, is there a clickbait on there? Oh, okay, Survivor Man. That's cool. Yeah, isn't it nice out, Dan? Do you go to this Starbucks ever? Yeah, I had a good time in Indianapolis. It was a lot of fun. Just partied all night. Yeah, what clickbait are you talking about? Which ones? Oh, southeast Fort Wade, okay. Oh, excuse me. And I'm actually, I'm going to get a pot belly sub today. 39 degrees out. But no wind and the sun's out. It's like a big difference. 
I've learned through years of surveillance and vehicles that the sun out means everything. If it was a cloudy day right now, I'd have to have the van running. Say yes to UV rays. Yeah, this is just like perfect, man. This is just a good day just sitting here, not doing shit. Just had a big coffee. I may get two coffees today. People take sleeping pills, melatonin, L-tryptophan, a glass of milk, exercise. Well, I can tell you what helps me sleep, dragon's milk. There's no dementia associated with it like there is with uh, Benadryl. I'll tell you that alcohol, you know, I don't drive when I drink at all. Because even the slightest amount of alcohol impairs your uh, ability. It does. I test it all the time. I could give you an example. Like I had one dragon, I drink true dragon's milk. 99% of the time. The blue moon I'll have three and I always regret it. And sometimes just one. But anyway, last night I drank one and some guy was texting me about boxing, which I've been a big boxing fan my whole life. And uh, God, I could not remember some of the names of these guys. And then I got up this morning and I thought the same thing and it came right to me. So that just goes to show you. Anybody that's starting a YouTube channel, if you get into editing and uploading videos, I hope this lady's careful crossing the street. Do not drink and edit videos. You'll be deleting files, all sorts of stupid shit. Uh, if I've got something that I gotta do and make sure it gets done right, I, uh, I don't drink anything, not even a little, because you'd be making one mistake after another. I think this lady, she looks like the lady that had a cell phone yesterday when she was drinking a coffee. She's coming over here to get a Starbucks coffee. You're taking your life in your own hands when you cross that, that intersection. Speaking of that intersection, you know, I, I, I don't go there anymore, the Tim Hortons. But uh, there's a super dangerous crossing. People think they're just going to walk across to big boys. And it car wrecks there all summer long. It's the old style left turn lane. Everybody trying to turn left going both ways. And I go out there all, all year long and tell people, I'll see somebody out there with a couple kids and they got them by the hand and they think they're doing the right way thing. It's not my business. And I go out there and say, hey, look, I do lie a little bit because I don't want them crossing, but just a little bit. I said, hey, you shouldn't be crossing here. This is very dangerous. There are car wrecks here constantly. Walk down there another hundred yards and cross at the light. Trust me on this. I'm here all the time. I said, people get hurt here all the time, which is a little bit of an exaggeration. But there are car wrecks all the time. So if those were people there instead of car wrecks, but I don't want to see these people getting run over. It looks innocent. It's a bad place to cross. You don't have like the concrete there where you can step up on and people can clearly see it. No shit. I see teenagers doing it, college kids going up north to ski and stuff. I tell them, man, do not cross here. You're taking your life in your own hands. Just listen to the old guy sipping a coffee. I, I've, I've seen this shit. You're young and think nothing's going to happen to you. It's not that way. So nice. Hey, Lori. I'm scrolling back here. It's 40, what is it now? 40 degrees here? That's true, Survivor, man. Buzz driving, yeah.
Number three, wow. No, you're right, peanut tube in the sun, yeah. You know, it is interesting, and, uh, you know, nobody looks at coffee as like an addiction, but of course it's a drug, it's a stimulant, and once Uncle Sam rubber stamps some, someone and you can comfortably order it from anywhere and you don't need to be 18 to buy it, you assume that it's okay. But there's some pretty good arguments for coffee being just a bad drug. And if they made it illegal tomorrow, would you still try and sneak, sneak a cup or two in the morning? Something to think about. You could be addicted to coffee, Mary. You could be. But you're cool with it because it's legal. It's just like I've never smoked marijuana. But when they came out with gummies, I bought some because it was legal. Now, you know, it's just, like I said, human behavior, man. It's crazy. That's why I'm not in Ohio or Kentucky right now because I want to go in. Ohio wanted a 14-day quarantine. Well, I'm not going there. I'm not going to be out interviewing people when you don't want me here to begin with. Yeah, legal drug, actually, yeah. Yeah, take for an example. Mary, if they decided that January 1st coffee was going to be illegal, would you continue to try and drink it or not? If it got categorized as an illegal stimulant, which it is a stimulant, would you continue to drink it? I bet you wouldn't. Yeah, you're right, Steve, about that. Yeah. Nicotine, too. Yeah, <laughs> girl, Mary. No, you don't do what you want. Because uh, you wouldn't take a gummy because uh, you're, you're not supposed to do that uh, it, with your type job. Even though you could have a medical marijuana card and it's legal recreationally, you could just want to party. Because of your job, you couldn't do it. And I know you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it because you're not supposed to. Yeah, I come down south. Yeah, I go down there, yeah. Not like I used to. I was just in Kentucky. That's south. Yeah, but speeding is a criminal infraction, a civil infraction. It's not criminal. It's not. If, if they caught you with some Ritalin without a, prescri without a prescription, that's a crime. It's different. It's apples and oranges. Now, oddly enough, in Michigan, an expired tag is a crime. It's a misdemeanor. Yeah, the truth of the matter is, though, it's I find it ironic that you couldn't take a gummy, but you could go out and get blitzed with your girlfriends Friday and Saturday night through alcohol, which is arguably worse, and that's legal. It's nuts. Oh, thank you, Walt. It's it's crazy. Yeah, but I mean, overall, if overall, I mean, at least from what I've read, it, you know, it's same with like drinking alcohol. Is it good for you or bad for you? Right. Well, that's the fifty thousand dollar question. When you look at running overall, go talk to an orthopedic surgeon or someone does knee replacements. I don't know how wearing your knees out recreationally is in any way healthy. Yeah, I mean, these states have figured out how much money there is in all these vices, cigarettes, they realized you can add as much tax as you want to cigarettes and people are going to keep on buying them. They realized it with booze. And now they realized it with dope, marijuana, and the next thing is sex. 
And they've even realized that in places in Nevada, not Las Vegas. You know, people think you just go out to Las Vegas and you just, it's nonstop sex for the week you're there. Wrong. I mean, it may be, but it's illegal in Las Vegas. Prostitution's illegal there. They set up stings all the time, busting people. That's true, Steve. Yeah, but I don't think there's any, uh, I don't think there, I don't think that you would have a problem with the little amount of booze that would be, let's say, in fruitcake or eggnog. I mean, come on. I can understand wanting to avoid it, but, I mean, you know, they give, they give fruitcake to kids and it's got rum in it. I mean, it's not like you're going to be getting on the expressway the wrong way. Yeah, it's true, Survivor, man. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, that's the big thing that causes you energy. Uh, growth hormone. That is exactly right. That's the difference. That's why people say, I don't feel like I did when I was younger. That's the major reason, growth hormone. Now, you can always inject it illegally, and you can get doctors to give it to you and have a square forehead like Randy Couture or Sylvester Stallone. You know, growth hormone's also responsible for your hands and ears and nose getting bigger as you age. It's growth hormone. But if you take excessive amounts of it, you may feel better, but you'll also look like clutch cargo in the forehead. There's nothing worse than a girl with a beautiful bangs over a 19 inch wide forehead. Stem cells are, you know, the good ones are from abortions. That's where they get the good stem cells. Yeah, that's another whole can of worms. I'm talking about excessive growth hormone. I mean, I, you know, who doesn't want to feel like they did at 18 again? And growth hormone will make you feel like that. I know a, a physician, actually. He's a plastic surgeon in Indianapolis. Shit, he, he's always shooting himself up with growth hormone. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, there's some signs. There's some, Look at a lot of these bodybuilders. They got something going on now with these steroids they're taking that they have. They look pregnant. But uh, that growth hormone will, uh, you know, it's not all, always kind. I mean, look at these female bodybuilders, but that's a whole nother, you know, thing. That's, you know, the estrogen, the crossover testosterone, estrogen levels, blah, 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 growth hormone. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I don't find those bodybuilding women attractive. I wouldn't be, uh, no thanks. I mean, I, I, it's great they lift weights and they maximize their body and all that shit, but it doesn't do anything to me, for me. I like soft and hairless. Yeah, I like the old, like, uh, Rachel McClish type, uh, you know, like, uh, back when Miss America could wear a bathing suit, not look like she had a big nine-inch cock chopped off. Call me old-fashioned. <laughs> yeah, shit, yeah. Yeah, I don't like it either. Yeah, I was thinking that yesterday. There were some young, cute girls in the Barnes & Noble, and they were just having a hell of a good time. And I was thinking to myself, my well, girls, I hope you guys are really enjoying this day because it's a finite period of time. You guys are just having fun. and You really think that studying hard and 
all this bullshit is going to get you somewhere. And, and maybe it is. But you have no idea what's in store for you in the real world of life. Enjoy this innocent time. You know, another thing I was thinking about, you, you guys are going to slaughter me for this, but... You know, when women are... This is just perspective from a guy. You know, when you're young and you see these young girls, they just... Makeup is a big deal. Their hair, their kind of jeans, they're just really on their A game all the time. You're, they're not getting out of that house not looking good. Mostly. I'm not saying there aren't bad days where you're sitting around in sweats. But to try to pinpoint that timeline with women... It's hard to do. To me, it seems like it leaves around the mid-30s or, and it's totally gone by the early 40s. When you're a young guy and you're dating women and you pick them up and they're 20, I mean, they smell good, their nails are great, and then as time goes on, I don't know whether they, there's an internal clock that makes them think that they're not as attractive and they give up. But by the late 30s and the early 40s, it's like you pick them up and they're in a damn... Uh, worn out pair of sweats and they didn't have time to put their makeup on and just the whole equation changes and instead of just pulling into that driveway with a big smile on your face you just want to kind of keep going because it's not that great it's not like at 20 where you're thinking the whole time this girl is so damn cute you stay up all night talking about bullshit happily you take like 300 mile walks and don't get tired. And then when you get old, it's like, ugh. No, not always. No, uh, not always. Yeah, why is that, Stephanie? I mean, uh, my guess is that there's a point where doing all those things to make yourself attractive when you were 20 aren't a possibility anymore. Do you just, do women just give up? I mean, what's going on there? Now, I'm generalizing. There are exceptions. Yeah, you see what I mean, Stephanie? That's like, now, now, now this is going to sound racist, but I can't help it. It's true. I noticed that there seems to be more time bought with Hispanic women. They, they seem to hang in there a lot longer. Yeah, 50 cent. No, 50 cent. No, it's a, it's a, there's an argument for that. No, you're right. No, it's not just women. I'm talking from a male's perspective. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Oh, shut up, Mary. I, I knew you'd, uh, that would uh, release some more growth hormone. I knew you'd love that comment. No, you're right. Some 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 uh, a races seem to age better. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, uh, let me give you another example. When I go in that uh, Bangkok '96 or '69 or whatever the hell it is, that uh, Thai place down in Dearborn, I'll tell you, the older women ju look just as attractive as the younger one, younger women. They do. They're like 40s, 50s, just really feminine and pretty. I notice that with Asian women a lot too. Just really like like calm and like feminine. You're going to say subservient. I didn't say that. You did. But just like real soft-spoken, you know. They're not screaming at you the top of your lungs telling you to get the fuck out of here. It's just like like really like nice, feminine, you know... Uh, they don't they're not stealing your razors in your sleep their skin is soft they're like not yelling at the top of their lungs they just like that nice feminine like you know <laughs> no there there are there are exceptions like that I do see women sometimes that are just like still super attractive and they're older 
I met a lady like that down in Crawfordsville, Indiana the other day. Probably 45. I'm really like a cute. And I, and I think it's demeaning for... Uh, maybe it's not demeaning. That's probably the wrong word to use. But You know that women keep themselves... They've kept themselves up. That's kind of like insulting to me. But I know what they're talking about. If you say to me, I want you to give me an honest answer. When I say women have kept themselves up, do you know what I'm talking about? And I would say, yes, I do. I do know what you're talking about. I've realized, uh, as I've turned into an old man, that uh, maybe I set the bar too high on expectations. But I've found in my life, I don't like women like when they let their hair down. I don't want to see them uh, looking like a, a male bodybuilder or uh, not feminine. I, I just don't like that. I don't want like a 50-year-old uh, honey boo-boo you know, that thinks rolling around in the mud and catching catfish is the way to go. It's just not for me, man. I like, like, f old days feminine, like Mary Tyler Moore, Ginger and Mary Ann on Gilligan's Island. You know, like, like feminine ladies, and it just seems like as things have evolved, like, it's not the same anymore. Yeah, I knew you'd love Fitty Sin. Yeah, Mary. You guys will probably end up being best friends. Look, I can only articulate it from a male's perspective. I'm not saying it's any different or any better or any worse. I'm just saying you how I see the world. <laughs> Which, of course, is 100% accurate. Hey, Deborah. <laughs> yeah. That's right, Steve. I mean, look how look how they, uh, you know, the producers of Gilligan's Island understood this. I mean, you know, look at these stupid shows now, like Survivor. You see these women; they don't, they're not shaving. They're running around nude for a month. Who the hell wants to see that? Even even on Gilligan's Island, Marianne and Ginger, and even the professor's wife look good. That's my idea of being shipwrecked. I don't, I don't want to be shipwrecked with some, like, hairy woman that doesn't put makeup on. I just don't. I don't want to watch a TV show where the women don't take showers for a month and run around nude. Sorry. Hi, hon. What you doing? Come on up here, hon. Come on, honey. That a girl. That a girl. You get a little sleep, baby. Yeah, Mary Ann had a drinking problem, though. She's been uh, Google her name. She get, keeps getting busted for drunk driving. John Denver had a uh, drinking problem too. I mean, look. Uh, God bless these people. I, who doesn't slay their own dragons? Have their own baggage. You know, you got shit that kind of hangs around. And... Hey, 50 Cent. 50 Cent, you bring up... Uh, I see you got the women. Uh, it's a great rebuttal you gave. I'm a... <laughs> Do men let themselves down <laughs> with <laughs> beer bellies? You know, I like that kind of interaction, man. I do. I do. Uh, I'm always interested in the, uh, uh, I don't want to say opposition, but the other side of the coin. It makes for good conversation. No, I never watch it. I, I don't, I don't want to see those. Uh, I mean, this is, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to say it's, it's a different subject, but it is, it, it is different, but it's also kind of the same, like. Even like full nude bars. I, I don't want to be in one of those, man. I don't want to see this nude bullshit. First of all, most of them don't serve alcohol. It's just Kool-Aid and shit like that. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be in a place seeing a bunch of nude women drinking Kool-Aid. It's weird. It doesn't interest me. Now, a nice topless bar, well done one. Now, you're going to say, yeah, well, well done. What's that? I'll tell you what, what it is. Not a bunch of purple hair. A bunch of Frisbees hollowed out, used as a nose ring. 
bunch of these crazy ass nasty looking tattoos I want to see like Ginger and Mary Ann's and Mary Tyler Moore's when they were 20 years old that's what I'm looking at they don't need to be fully nude just a beautiful it's beautiful I mean it is sexual in a way because they're attractive but it's like the whole ball of wax it's like you look at these people sometimes like you're so attractive as a female you know it's not just like you know, totally nude. That just seems like weird to me. Do what you want to please only yourself. Oh, God. You need to get back on your medication. I mean, they're trying to make it look like it's a crime to just appreciate a young, uh, attractive person. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, nudity ruins it. I mean, there's just something for, like, subtle, like, dress nice. And, you know, uh, it just seems like you don't see that much of it anymore. That's why I think I saw, thought these girls were so cute in Barnes & Noble. Just cute girls having a good time. Yeah, really enjoying life at that age. That's it, R&R, &R, baby, yeah. It's not like I hung out at those places a lot, I mean. And, like, I have two giant uh, strip clubs right out my uh, hotel uh, parking lot. I mean, I could walk right over, and it just, I, I know what's in there, probably. If it was like the old days, if you said, hey, I'm going to have a bunch of, like, Ginger and Mary Ann's and Mary Tyler Moore's, and even Lucy had a killer body. Uh, bewitched and they're gonna 20 years old and they're gonna be dancing I'd probably be over there I'd, you'd probably have a hard time get me get me to leave but it's not like that anymore it's all like foul mouth metal all over their face tattoos purple hair sun damage from tanning booths uncouth rude fake tits why would I want to pay to see that Walt, are you with me? So, and for those reasons and more, I don't want to go over there. I know what's inside there. Yeah, they're wearing masks. Yeah, and I don't think they're, I don't think in Indiana. You never know. Indiana, man, it's like, it's a little different than a lot of places. I don't, God knows what they get away with in those bars. They seem pretty, like, lax on, on that kind of stuff. I mean, here you can't go inside and eat in Lexington. You got a 14-day quarantine in Ohio, and I could go get a lap dance all night long in Indiana. That's my state, the Hoosiers, yeah. What part of Kentucky, Fitty? Where at? Lexington, I was just down there. Love Lexington. You ever go get sushi at that Tekka, Tika, whatever it is, over near the Barnes and Noble? Never steam clean, yeah, you're probably right. That's the daisy cam. Yeah, well, you know, they do have masks on. I don't, I, you probably, I mean, I shouldn't be saying that. You, you maybe you can't get lap dances. You know, I didn't, I didn't like those even when I was young. Oh, Dale Hollow Lake. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love Kentucky. It's a beautiful state. I want to I get back there in the spring. Not around the, like, horse racing time, though. Just I'd like to just drive around as spring's coming into Kentucky. See that bluegrass and the sun setting. 
and like colts out running around with steam coming out of their mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you're talking about Tijuana now, Ashley. Yeah, if you like mountains, uh, you're not going to find better mountains than, uh, in my opinion, the Canadian Rockies. They absolutely blow away anything you see in the United States. And if you don't want to go that far, definitely go to the Rocky Mountain National Park in the fall. And in the spring, now the spring there is like middle June, Glacier National Park. I don't like the Appalachian Trail. I think it sucks. I'd rather walk around the back of an out-of-business Riley O'Reilly Auto Parts. Bunch of smog in the air all the time, these little bullshit trails. It's not even like legit mountains. I think the Appalachian Trail is overrated. Plus you got a bunch of scammers trying to take you out from the beginning to the end. Now they've been able to cast this Appalachian Trail as this romantic, grueling, uh, benchmark in life. Nah, I don't buy it. I think it's an overworn two-track that sucks. Oh, Banff and Jasper, yeah. Doesn't get any better than that. Yukon, too far. That's too woodsy for me. Now I want to I wanna be able to pull off the trail for a second and drink my $9 latte. Guess I'm a big pussy deep down carry around a mini air conditioning unit for my tent. I don't want to be sleeping on any hard ground either. Adirondacks, nice. Yep, I do. Yeah, I don't like the smoky... You know, that's actually smog. You know, smoky sounds better than uh, lung-ruining, never-ending clouds. It's not healthy. Yeah, you need to wear a ventilator when you go through the Smoky Mountains in the summertime when you get that hot, moist air that lays low. You might as well take a Greyhound bus and pipe the exhaust into your hotel room so you can get used to it. It's not healthy. My next vacation, I just want to go to Sloan, Indiana, where I can watch giant wind turbines chop up migrating birds while I eat 20 milligram gumbies and pay the grateful debt on my boombox. Nah, there's no way I want to make my own trails. No way. Nope. I like the idea of it, but the reality of it is, nah. I think I'm too big a pussy. Yeah, it's like jogging on busy roads. That or like being in downtown Chicago at uh, uh, a corner cafe just inhaling carbon dioxide for the whole day while you're eating your uh, fat-free romaine lettuce salad. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not kidding you, man. These wind turbines, these wind generators, a bunch of bullshit. They're inefficient. They're super expensive. You use little, tons of natural resources to make them. They chop up birds. Talk to a maintenance man on a wind turbine. You know what he's doing in May and April, early June? He's running around with a contractor's garbage bag filling them up with dead migrating birds that have been taken out in the night as they tried to make their way north. And bats too. Kills bats too. These things are terrible and they're noisy and they're ugly. That's a bunch of bullshit people get sold. You think that you're just gonna let the wind just power all this stuff with these God awful ugly machines and that they're environmentally friendly is absolutely not true. 
you could fill your whole top of your roof with solar panels and you couldn't even run a damn vibrator on it for a half hour. That shows you how inefficient they are. And I'm talking about a small vibrator. Water's way more uh, efficient. Hydropower. It's 80%. Air is only like 20 It does, Walt. Yeah. That that's why these utility companies trick you because they're smart enough. If 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 you order one of these things <coughs> and you paid a hundred grand for a good one, you put it in your yard, you'll be dead way ahead of the game. You to generate a hundred thousand dollars worth to pay for that thing, forget it. And then if it, they need maintenance, they're just, I just think they're not good. There may be one going like hell someplace that's paying for itself, but these ones, they stick around up in the Midwest and they sucker these municipalities. They bamboozled Canada straight across from East Taos, Michigan. Stuck those things in beautiful uh, Lake, Lake uh, Huron. Looks like shit. Talk about ruining the landscape. There's a reason why your your neighbor can't put a 400 foot flagpole in his yard because it looks like shit. Deed restrictions. But yet, when these clowns come in with the ruin these landscapes with these wind turbines, nobody says anything like it's some big great deal. It's not. Yeah, not on the grid. Well, that's why they trick you, you know. That's why you, you, if you went and laid out a crazy amount of money for this because you believe some uh, crazy on the Internet that you were going to just be self-sufficient, it's not happening. That's why the power that they generate gets sold back to the utility company because you would realize if you were trying to use it yourself that it wasn't worth it. But when it gets sold back and you get this credit on your bill every month, it gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling like you're really helping and this is helping the environment. And rather than having this twin jet turbine that's making everything run perfectly, you're, you're having this thing flop around in the air under the roofs of energy conservation, which is horseshit. Yeah, flying midwells. Yeah. Yep. I tell people just turn off the stuff you're not using. Quit leaving lights on. Why don't you start there? Just turn the lights off. I had a wife like that. Oh, he's composting and this and that. There's nothing for her to leave the lights on all the time. It started a lot of arguments. It's like, hey, it's great that you just buried that coffee can full of garbage. Uh, but what about this light you've left on for 19 hours in a room that you're not in? Why don't you just start with uh, turning those off? The honeymoon was over then. That's about the same time the makeup started coming off, too, and she was running around and sweatpants with holes and no perfume I knew right then I had to get rid of her when we were dating I'd say you know it'd be nice if you just could keep a little better attention on turning lights off now fast forward 20 years it's like you better turn those fucking lights off or I'm going to get a divorce attorney It's the degradation of a marriage. Isn't that funny how that happens though?
What did Fitty send? What you think Daisy was a cat? You have vanity, Diane. Daisy, you're going to get to go for a big walk today, hon, wherever you want. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people think Daisy's a cat when they see her on the dash. Hey, Patricia. Oh, does it really? I'm surprised you get that much out of it, Virginia. Huh. Oh, a duffel bag. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard that one. See your psychiatrist, Fitty. Oh, that's cool. I mean, I like the idea of it. I like fooling around with it, I mean. I rank that right up there with burning ants with a magnifying glass. Only not as much fun. You know, when I was a kid, all my buddies, we all shot birds. We'd throw bread out the window and then shoot them when they landed. And that was just like something we did. And then my mom tore out a thing from Dear Abby where they somebody linked serial killers to doing shit like that. Well, dear old mom has been dead since 82, but mom, I want to tell you, I never turned into a serial killer. You believe that old crazy bitch on there. She didn't even have proper education. All it was was shooting birds, mom. That's it. Oh, okay, Walt. Well, you're able to contain yourself. I can't remember where this pot bellies is. I get mixed up on this road all the time. Yeah, it finally dawned on me. It's like, this, this is not good. I don't know. The thing that scares me is that, even as a child, why I would... I remember when my buddy shot his first word, he cried. He cried, which is interesting. I was with him. Johnny Rosentreter. He shot a sparrow and he cried. Now... What's interesting is Johnny, why would he cry? But what's more interesting is why would he continue to shoot birds? What a weirdo, Johnny. I'm glad I don't hang around with him anymore. Yeah, that's how I, I eventually, I got that way pretty early. I mean, I was already done with hunting, like, by the time I was 18. And, I later dropped fishing. You know, look, it's a legal sport. I wouldn't enjoy it. I'm not anti-hunter, blah, blah, blah. But it just doesn't interest me. Little Johnny turned out to be kind of a kook anyway. I guess that was a writing on the wall. I'd like to hand that questionnaire out to a bunch of kids, though, that were that age, like 10, 11, 12. I'd like to hand out a questionnaire and see where they're coming from with shooting birds. Whether, you know, there'd still be some people that thought it was a cool thing to do. Or that, you know, everything's been morphed into, like, live and let live. Because I think shooting pheasants and ducks and geese is different than blowing the head off a sparrow as he sits on a wire when there's no real hunting season. It's different. Probably true, Walt. There you go, Faye. What time is it now?
Oh, 11.34? Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's good to do. I, I couldn't do it. Just an innocent bird. Well, the way I look at it is something just out there eating. I came unglued on one of my neighbors that's since moved because the possum was eating their cat food and they shot it. That really pissed me the hell off. you got to be really stupid to do something like that. Possums out there just eating food. He didn't know it was the cats and you shoot him over it. That just speaks so many, so, it speaks volumes to me. It's just like being out on a date or something like that, or you're interested in someone, and then they just make some comment that just unplugs it. It's like, I can't believe you just said that stupid shit. I'm not into women that are, that are, I'm not into women that are like hunters either. You know, when I see some attractive woman in her hobbies fishing, next. Oh, India, how you doing? Yeah, the average uh, life of a possum, I have a book on them, they only live a little less than two years because of, you know, everything's eating them and running over them and they're slow and they don't really protect themselves and on and on and on. You know, possums don't get rabies. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, people eat it. Yeah, they eat it. Yep. No, those kids moved. No, you know, I was gone for the whole month of August and they moved in between. Landlord was pissed off. They, they, she didn't think they took good enough care of the house. That that place has been sold, actually. I don't really know the new guy. I haven't been home much. I'd rather not know my neighbors. I'm not the kind of guy where I want people dropping by or I'm over borrowing sugar or any of that shit. It's like, hi, how you doing? That's, that's, that's where I like it. Yeah, it was nice to those kids. It was a little weird, though. I mean, you know, I've lived next to people before and... You know, we keep in touch, not hanging out, but how you doing? Johnny's graduating, you know. Uh, Cindy just sold her first box of strawberries. That's fine. You know, I'm all for it. Give them money for their cookie sales and all that other bullshit they need money for. During. I'm, I'm fine with that. I like that. Actually, I'm happy to do it. But then it was a little off. You know, I mean, there's always the chance that one of these stalkers contacting him and told them that, you know, I made kitty porn in my off time and that avoid me like the plague and they believed it. You, you, you never know with this YouTube stuff. It was like, okay, but it was ever like, and I'm sure if I run into them, it's like, how you doing? But it, it wasn't like totally normal. Lamb is great. Tastes like chicken. Hey, Romina, how you doing? But, I mean, there's other people I've lived with, and, you know, I mean, they would have, like, left me a note. Like, hey, Tom, you know, I, you've been gone. Here's where we're living now. Here's my number. Keep in touch. Nothing. Nothing like that at all. Which is fine. You know, I don't have a problem with it, but it, something was a little off there. And I, and I don't know what, how to explain it. so weird uh, on the other hand she was going through a traumatic divorce trying to figure out how she was going to like make ends meet and it was a big custody battle and property division so you know she wasn't in the best frame of mind you know we, we would have nice conversation but it wasn't like it was strictly professional I guess I could say that it would have never been like, uh, you know, she cooked me dinner and brought it over a few times, that kind of things. But something a little off. I'm not complaining. I'd rather have it that way than somebody stopping by all the time. But uh, all things considered, it, it was a good experience. Oh, thank you, Bo Bronco. Yeah. I like lamb. Frog legs are hard to get. I'll tell you where you can get good frog legs. It's is that uh, fish place over on Five Mile in Detroit.
that famous Scotty's Fish place, they have good frog legs. Frog legs are hard to get. Now, I don't, I don't use the mint with it. I don't like, I, I, I never put the mint on it. The old Jamie, she just had a baby, I guess. She just had a baby, the old Jamie. You know, I actually deleted her interview back in August. It's just kind of this weird glitch, her thank you video. Uh, she's hanging in there. She's got a Facebook. Jamie Burton's her name. J-A-M-I-E Burton. She She's fine with people contacting her through there. Yeah, braised lamb is good. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, tzatziki sauce is good. Yep. Sure is. Daisy likes lamb. Don't you like lamb, honey? Hey, Angie. How you doing? Uh, and Becky's, you know, Becky's a mover and a shaker. She's, she's, uh, a little smarter than many of the other girls. And Becky's, Becky's in a bed most of the time, some kind of way. <laughs> no pun intended. You know, I, I find it interesting sometimes, like, uh, it doesn't happen as much as it used to, but we will get together, like, with Ebony and... Liz and Becky and we'll have breakfast and there'll be like four or five working girls sitting around. We're having a good time laughing. And, you know, you know what they do for a living. I know what they do for a living. And that's never talked about. We're just like joking like friends. Nobody gives a shit. It's fun. Yeah, she she just uh, you know I don't mess around with Facebook, but I know she's on Facebook quite a bit. Oh, that's cool, actually. Yeah, you should come visit. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like you know him. I agree. Same way. Yeah, it's fun. It's you know it's fun just to like uh, you know ha have those. Uh, breakfast and stuff where we just sit around and talk it's like no different than anybody else there's a mystique to working women that people have there's a lot of married couples i know that you know know the girls through me through interviews and and up until they started watching these videos they had an idea what working girls were like and they see it on tv and they watch it on the news and then they get to know them and they actually go out of their way and look forward to delivering things to them and taking them out to dinner and washing their clothes and it's nice they really look forward to they're very motivated to have a relationship with these people in a good positive way and it's nice i mean i don't one thing i'll think the videos have done it's connected the dots between people out there like that and people that would have never met them under any other circumstance and it's made them feel comfortable in relating and having a relationship with these people, which is just as good as it gets. You should do it, Stephanie. Is it a girl or a guy, Ashley? Oh, then my Daisy baby. Daisy's a girl. Somebody was asking me about that light display. I got this brochure on the floor. Let me look at it. It's Blue Jacket's Fantasy of Lights. Hey, I don't know, like, you know, I went to that Shaker Village, I go to these tourist traps, right, take these photos. If anybody is ever uh, interested in these brochures, I'll send it to you. I mean, I'm not into it, I don't care. But if some people like this kind of stuff for some reason. 
It's a breath of fresh air. Big news Christmas market. So this was a company sponsor in this. Oh, here's a bunch of discounts. Oh, that's cool, Walt. It's kind of nice. Fantasy Alliance. Oh, to all the organizations. See, this doesn't say anything about a zoo connection. People telling me this is at the zoo. Oh, so this is just kind of brochures. Oh, here's all the people that put it on. Sponsors. Bunch of them. In memory of baby Oliver, Santa in the helicopter. Oh, that's sad. Little baby died, and the people in the honor of the baby paid for that uh, display of Santa in a helicopter. Oh, that's, that's thoughtful. A lot of these are a lot of these are memory of people. Memory of Steve Short, girl penguins in a Corvette. Memory of Thomas Frisch, Santa in a boat. Well, that's nice, people putting these. I want you guys to come together when I get taken out, and I want you to have two dancing, scantily clad girls. And I want it to say, in memory of Tom Reed, an old pervert. That's true, Walt. Yep, you're right. Yeah, pinata. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, this is kind of nice, these people. I don't know what it costs to put one of those up, but I'll bet it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I want you to have oh, I want you to have Santa and his Mrs. Claus next to him with like a pair of 46 triple D's just bulging out of the top of her Christmas suit. And say, hey, all you do-gooders living in your fantasy world, this is in memory of Tom Reed. This is Mrs. Claus with a big set of tits. That'll wipe the smile off their faces for halfway around the track. That's it, Susan. Yeah. Do that to honor me. Don't do what you want. Do what I requested, please. Oh, you're getting some venison. Uh, give it to your dogs. Venison sucks. Why do you think you never see it on a menu at a nice restaurant? Because nobody orders it. It's right up there with ostrich and emu and buffalo. There you go, Eric. Oh, thank you. It, it does matter how... They, that's the big thing with meat. There's two criteria. How they're finished off. In other words, what they eat. And the number one thing that makes meat affects the taste is stress. So basically, you got to come up and uh, be petting him on the head before you sink a 22 bullet between his eyes. He doesn't know it's coming. Stress hormones will ruin meat. I'm surprised that you're eating that meat like that, Mary. I thought you didn't like that. Oh, thank you, Dan. Oh, okay. All right, hey Gene. I, I like I get buffalo sometimes. The hamburger, it's good. Buffalo burger, it's well, that's lean, but you know this lean thing, man. It's another. That's why I put I rank that right up there with uh, wind turbines and 
solar panels. It's another bunch of bullshit people have been force-fed that they believe. People want all this. They watch this bullshit on TV. And, and uh, cholesterol is an issue. Uh, cholesterol is fat of animal origin. So, you know, you, red meat, there are pretty good established studies on red meat and different kinds of cancers. I get it. But you got to pick your poison. Do you want a good hamburger or one that's good for you? Big difference. If you want a good hamburger, it tastes good, 80-20. If you want a hamburger that's better for you, 90-10. You can't have it both. Oh, that's cool, Arnar. Yeah, Buffalo's good. You can get it. You can get it in Walmart now. Of course. It's actually good. But take the take the 12 ounce or 16 ounce pack of meat and look at the difference between ground up buffalo meat and ground up hamburger and you'll see the differences. It's quite quite uh, interesting. Now, I think if you were going to eat both of them and you picked over a lifetime which one to eat, you'd probably have some benefits. But this notion that out of every 10,000 hamburgers you're going to eat, you're going to eat one that's lean, it's a bunch of bullshit. You might as well just eat one that tastes good. It's not going to matter that much. Yeah, Eric knows about this, you know. Yeah, buffalo. I mean, jerky, you know, you can make, you, you could take paper mache, you could take an old Life or Look magazine and make jerky out of it. It's like the lowest grade of marbleized, sodium-laced meat in existence. There's probably jerky laying around the moon. I mean, this is not gourmet in any way. You sit and chew on it like a damn great white shark. You know, I got some jerky out great here. You can have mine. Even that guy that delivered my van that came up and visited, that's all he talked about the whole way here was jerky this, jerky that. He bought a pound of jerky, and when he was leaving, I said, don't forget your jerky. He said, you can have it. Yeah. And guess who got the jerky? Daisy. Yeah, you got to add something. Yeah, that's my whole point. If you don't add something to it, it sucks. Venison has never made it in a commercial setting, and it's because nobody wants to eat it. It sucks. Nine out of ten times, if someone gives you venison or you give it to someone, you know what they do with it? They give it to their dogs. I mean, you can sit there and act like, you know, you're in touch with nature and you're eating this chemical-free. That damn deer probably ate plants laced with Roundup for 50% of his life. You guys need a get-real moment. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it, Peanut. It wasn't too bad. You never hear anybody describing filet mignon like that. It wasn't too bad. That, that's my whole point about jerky. Bunch of dried up old crap. Yeah, but that's one of those shows, Gordon Ramsay. You know, that's they're always trying to, like, it's some something sensational. You know, they'll make a carrot taste good or... It adds credibility that, you know, even this guy is cooking venison, so therefore, maybe I'll cook it. It's not the same. He's got every trick in the book to make that palatable. He's got eight PhDs in food preparation. Your venison isn't going to take like taste like his. You want, you want really good meat, go to a, you know, it's a low grade of meat, but I give them A plus for preparation. Uh, Eric, uh, next time I'm in Detroit, I'll take you down to that Texas de Brazil. Don't eat for two days and we'll go there. It's like 75 bucks each or some shit like that, but that'd be my treat. If you're just gonna pig out once in a day as a meat eater, go to one of those Brazilian steakhouses. Don't load up on bread and salad. And just go batshit crazy. I like going there every once in a while. I haven't been to one in a while, but it, but it's not the greatest quality meat.
but the way they prepare it and season it and it's hot and it's right off the thing whatever they call that rod they put it on it's good as hell every once in a while I mean I'd be dead by a heart attack if I ate there as much as I wanted to but it's a good experience it's worth it <laughs> yeah I want to now I've went to pretty much all of those that I know of in the United States and I'll tell you believe it or not lucky for us is that Texas Deep Brazil to me is the best one there is they got a great salad bar which sounds like an oxymoron when you're describing a meat place but Texas Deep Brazil to me has got it going on yeah next time I'm down in Detroit uh, we'll we'll meet you down there we'll go we'll go tear that place up it's worth it every once in a while it's just fun to like you know they got lamb chops and this they take this chicken I don't normally like bacon they put bacon on it and then they have a three dollar an hour cook from Asia that's handcuffed to his bed when he gets off work prepare it for you it's human trafficking at its finest if it wasn't it'd be a hundred and fifty bucks a person Jeez, I think I think Monday I think Monday or Tuesday it's gonna be my eight, eighth week <laughs> you believe that Yeah, I wish there was one of those right down here. I don't know if you got it. Pot belly subs, I like those too. I'm going to get one of those today. Roast beef. Light on the sauces. Extra hot peppers. You know, Eric, you'll appreciate this. I noticed that the Vietnamese do it a lot, and everybody else. But the Vietnamese seem to have it down the best. There's a, there's a way you can make like these crunchy sandwiches. Kind of like a Thai pizza. And they can be anything. Meat, veggie, whatever. But the way these Thai and these Vietnamese people take jalapeno pepper and put just the right amount to where it's not like you're drinking a gallon of water after you took a bite, but it's just the right crunchy, spicy texture sandwich that you just love. They got this jalapeno thing down. Now the Mexicans will just hand you a bowl of them and tell you to eat away, which is good too. I don't like pickled jalapenos. I want the real ones. But those, those Thai, they got this jalapeno thing and peanut combo sauce, crunchy stuff down to a science. Yeah, I only eat, pot, I only eat subs three places. Captain Nemo's and, uh, near Belleville and Romulus. Izzy's, they only have one location on Stadium in Ann Arbor. And pot belly, I, I do get those. I like them. They're good. I, I think they're good. I wish there was a Brazilian steakhouse. The only thing I don't like about it is part of the shtick, you know, when you're bending people over at 75 bucks a piece for dinner, you know, there's a dog and pony show. No, people aren't going to show up. You know, you better go there and seem like a salad bar that you need a pair of binoculars to see the end of it. You know, a hundred different kinds of bread, all these cheeses. Of course, you got the big half of salmon laid out. You know, it's, I, I'd like to just skip all that bullshit. I want to get right to uh, skip the bread. I'll have a little salad. And let's get it on with the meat. If you went to a Brazilian steakhouse, Eric's a guy. You know, we're not gay, so there's no threat there. But if, if I would, I would never take a female to a Brazilian steakhouse with me because it'd be embarrassing. She would think I'd have an eating disorder or that I got some stimulus money and then I'm going crazy. Because when I go wild in a Brazilian steakhouse, it's crazy the amount of meat that I eat at one sitting. Eric won't give a shit. He'll be doing the same thing. We can check our etiquette at the door. Be like a couple of cavemen drunk. Hey, little me. Yeah, well, I mean, you'll laugh. I mean, this, look at motorcycles. It's a constant dilemma in a steakhouse. You show up with 20 people for a birthday party or an event or whatever. There's, there's probably gonna be one vegetarian in there. 
and the, the vegetarian doesn't want to pay 75 bucks and only eat salad so they try to cut a deal and the this is a meat place and it's like sorry it's 75 bucks for dinner you know if you only eat salad that's your problem now in Chicago they tried to run interference but they just didn't want this to get complicated I mean if you if everybody came in and they predicated what they charged you on what you were going to eat the thing would go off the rails but even for a vegetarian you would love it at a Brazilian steakhouse you would freak out at the selections and you'd get your money's worth you'd also have an eating disorder because to get $75 worth of vegetables at one sitting you've either got to weigh about 500 pounds or have not eaten in a week I think it's impossible No, you you haven't been a Walt. You haven't been uh, you haven't been acclimated to it properly. If you got introduced to raw fish, good raw fish, you would like it. It's better for you. It's cuisine. You know, this isn't any Appalachian hot dog wagon. This is like good food that you just need to get a give another bite at the apple. Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to head out of here, you guys, and go uh, attack a pot belly sub. I'm going to take Daisy for a nice walk today. And a party. The mall's looking really busy. Look at all the cars. When the cars are parked facing me, that shows a park, a packed parking lot, which it is, so I'm happy for them. You see that? Chick fil A is busy. The flag's flying better. I get, the, I get the roast beef with extra hot peppers light on the sauces. Don't get the, the wheat bun, it sucks. And don't let them talk you into the jumbo sub until you see if you like them or not. Get the standard size sub, sub, white bread, roast beef, everything on it light on the sauces. No, I, I get extra hot peppers, but you know, that, that you may like, when you look at the menu, you may like something different. And make sure they rip you off on the diet coke that they have there. I think it's two fifty a coke. It just doesn't seem the same when you don't get bent over for your drink. But there's something about that crunchy bread, that hot pepper, those great sauces, and drinking a carbonated coke at the same time. It's really good to me. It's worth it. That's why I pay two fifty for a can of pop because I'm there. It's cold. What am I going to bring a two liter in with me and sit there like a Polish war hero? Oh, a free diving spearfish. That's cool. Jimmy John sucks. I don't know how they stay in business. Take care, Bo Bronco. Yeah, it's a good day today, man. I have a great day today. I really enjoy this day out. Daisy, you ready for a a little bit of my roast beef off my sub, hon. All right. All right, you guys, Susan. All right. All right, Rachel. See you, Virginia. Yeah, Eric, we'll go to that uh, steakhouse, that Brazilian steakhouse. It's a pain in the ass to park down there. Maybe it's gotten better. You too, Patricia. Try and hit a high note. Yeah, quiz knows. It was a good chat today. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, thanks for qualifying it. Oh, good for you, Patricia. I hope you're getting more uh, subscribers or whatever. Hey, Tim. Um, just getting ready to head out. Yeah, you too, Graphic. Yeah, have a good day. Going to get a pot belly sub. Diet Coke. I'm going to party with Daisy. Hope you guys have a good day. I'll be on later today. I'll get on later today. Hopefully there's not some kook that goes into the mall today. It's a normal day where people can, like, make money and stuff.
Nice packed parking lot. I'm happy to see this. See you all. See you, Lumi. Thank you. See you, Mari. See you, Rachel, Virginia. Yep, have a good day, you guys. We're going to go get a sub now, honey.